On March 21, 2016, students from around the province gathered in the Aboriginal Centre of Winnipeg's Grand Rotunda to learn about and celebrate the heroic contributions of Canada's Indigenous veterans. The Honouring Indigenous Heroes Tommy Prince Commemoration Project was created to recognize the achievements of Tommy Prince and also to recognize the heroic contributions of many other Indigenous veterans who've served and protected Canada. An event-filled afternoon, students and all those in attendance heard from Indigenous veterans through speeches, a short video, and interactive learning stations. The Tommy Prince Commemorative Project will stand as a unique opportunity to bring together Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians in recognition and celebration of their shared history and values. Here now is your Master of Ceremonies, celebrated career producer, actress, and former Member of Parliament for Churchill, Tina Keeper. So we will start our day by inviting our Elder, uh, many of you know him, Elder Norman Mead. He is going to come up and do an opening prayer for today's event. It's always uh, an honor to come and do an opening prayer for a gathering like this. So many young people here and our leaders and our veterans. You know, sometimes when we open with a prayer, when we give thanks for those that have given us, give us the freedom that we have in our lives today, I know our young people appreciate and respect you with medals and our leaders we do respect you. Please stand with me as we do a prayer. <clears throat> creator God, you are our creator and our sustainer. You are our light and our fortress. You are our wisdom and our strength. Lord, you have inspired many of our best and our bravest to volunteer to proudly stand and defend this country of Turtle Island. You have given us brave and loyal men and women who have steadfastly served. May each of our Indigenous veterans feel honored, not just today, but every day. And may they feel the love of our young people that are with them today. We realize that many of our heroes are dealing with physical and emotional wounds. We ask for a spiritual blessing and for healing upon our land and upon those in the efforts that each one of them have, bring, have brought to us. We ask them, we ask for miracles as they seek to gain health and stability and wholeness in their bodies. We pray these things today in the name of our Lord. Amen. I'd like to now um, let you know that we are going to have an honor song by the Buffalo Gals Drum Group. We are thankful that we can meet here today on Treaty 1 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are here to celebrate and commemorate the story of Sergeant Tommy Prince and many Indigenous veterans who, through great sacrifice, upheld the freedoms that we enjoy today. Tommy Prince is a highly decorated Ojibwe soldier of the Second World War and the Korean War. 
and this event is part of a project aimed at providing educational awareness about the contribution of Tommy Prince and other veterans in Canadian history through their service in the military, Marines and the Air Force. And this event will help Canadians to recognize the exceptional accomplishments of Tommy Prince as well as the diverse contributions of many Indigenous veterans who fought in the defence of Canada and its values. So we have many guests to honour today, including Indigenous veterans from Manitoba, who will individually be recognised later on today in the programme. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of family members of Sergeant Tommy Prince. We have Tommy Prince Jr. and his nephew from Broken Head Ojibwe Nation. Thank you so much for joining us here today. The President of the Canadian Aboriginal Veterans, Donald Mackey, Order of Manitoba and the Canadian Forest Decoration. We also have a delegation from the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. A delegation from the 553 Army Cadets. A delegation from the Sergeant Tommy Prince School. A delegation of students from Maples Collegiate. Right on, thank you for joining us. And I am now going to introduce our next speaker. He is now in his second term as our Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. Please help me welcome Grand Chief Derek Nipanak. Miigwech. Bonjour Anishinaabe. Jigon Nichuagna Nibin Makwa and Dishna Kazmakwan Totem. It's my great honor to be here today as the Grand Chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, representing 61 of our First Nations communities here in Manitoba, Treaty 1 territory, to bring recognition and acknowledgement to the great accomplishments of one of our greatest soldiers. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here amongst uh, the veterans, the, uh, the active members of Canada's military, the leadership, but most importantly, our young people who are here to reflect upon the contributions that Indigenous people have always made to the creation and the shaping of this nation that we now call Canada. We need to be willing to talk about and elevate our great warriors from the past to reflect upon them so that we can be proud of what men and women have done over the generations. And that message I think that I wanted to share is for the young people because you know a lot of the history books that you've been taught so far in your young education, they're not truly reflective of the contribution that the great warriors of our generations have made. You know, we have to start rewriting some of these textbooks so that we reflect upon people like the late Tommy Prince here, who, who did such great things in battle. You know, there should be songs about this, about this man. There should be, there should be uh, you know, great history written and stories about what he did and what he accomplished. I think that's important for us now to do in this day and age of, of reconciliation. Reconciliation has to include a rethinking about how we've told our history. And I think that there's a lot of room to talk about the great warriors of our time. We should be elevating Tommy Prince the same way we've elevated people like Sitting Bull or Geronimo or Tecumseh or Pontiac or anybody from, the his, from our historical times that deserves a solid recognition for what they did, putting their lives on the line every day in battle. But I think it's a great opportunity to continue to open those doors and to continue to move forward with the decolonization effort that leads towards our great reconciliation. Miigwech, thank you. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, and he is our keynote address, and his name is Bill Shedd. He is a member of the Peguis First Nation, a graduate of Dalhousie University and the Canadian Forces Staff College. Lieutenant Commander, retired, Bill Shedd served 36 years in the regular and reserve forces of the Royal Canadian Navy. Please help me welcome Lieutenant Commander Bill Shedd. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for that introduction and for the opportunity to make this presentation. What I want to do is to talk about Tommy Prince a bit, but more importantly, and I think Tommy would want this, is to talk about other veterans and their contributions to the peace of Canada and the peace of the world. For you who are young, we're going to rely on you to remember some of these stories and to find new stories about people that you know 
particularly your family members. So I hope that what I will do today will stimulate you to do that research. Across Canada, many Aboriginal people were recruited to serve. This is a group that was recruited to serve in the, sec sorry, in the First World War. One of the most famous First World War Aboriginal soldiers was Francis Pekinakabo from Ontario. He won the Military Medal for Bravery three times. These are his medals. And we come now to the Second World War better veteran that is equally well known for his bravery and courage. And that's what we're celebrating today. His bravery, his courage in battle. He served eight years in the Canadian forces. During that time, most of it was against the enemy, right in the front lines, on patrol, behind enemy lines. He won two medals for valor, or gallantry, won the military medal for service in Italy. Second medal he won was the American Silver Cross for gallantry in service in southern France. You could see the wear on his face from what he did in battle. When you take a look at the heroism of the last two individuals that you saw, Prince and Peganagabo, they are not the only ones that were brave. All of the people that you saw on the headstones, their names on the headstones, some of the people that are in this room, they were brave as well. They might not have gallantry medals on their chest. They may not even have service medals on their chest. But they are the ones that gave up their youth, left their families, and were prepared to die in the service of their country, really in the service of peace. That's what you have to remember. And it's they that you have to give thanks to. Yes, remember Tommy Prince, and he would want you to remember his colleagues. The people like him who served. And that's really my message to you today, is remember Prince, remember anybody who has served our country, and be proud of them. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Shedd, for that um, keynote address. And now I'm going to introduce our next speaker. He is a decorated veteran of Afghanistan. He has been promoted four times since 1999 and has seen duty as the commanding officer of a task force overseeing the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. He is a highly decorated soldier. Please welcome our speaker, Major Thomas Williams. It's a great honor and privilege that I'm able to stand before you and say a few words about Sergeant Tommy Prince. Sergeant Prince's action during the Second World War in Korea are legendary within our regiment. Whether it's with the 1st Special Forces Group, as they're more known, the Devil's Brigade in Italy during World War II, or with the PPCLI in Korea and the Battle of Capion, his actions became part of the very history of those conflicts. When I found out that I would be representing the PPCLI during such an amazing honor, for Sergeant Tommy Prince, I sat for a moment and thought about what I would say. There is so much you could talk about and so much I would need to talk about. But after a couple hours of struggling to condense this Herculean topic and trying to develop a succinct narrative, it became crystal clear to me what made Sergeant Prince so great. It wasn't his wartime actions in Italy, Germany, or Korea, nor was it all the medals he had won. No, what makes Sergeant Tommy Prince so important is his inspiration. Inspiration transcends time and generations. Sergeant Prince's everlasting legacy is not 11 medals, not his amazing war record. His legacy is the inspiration that he has provided to all those who have come after him. The inspiration to achieve more, to do better, to never quit, to struggle for what is right. That is what great people do. This is what we are celebrating today. 
Not the history of a man, but the history of a man whose lasting legacy will inspire other men and women to be better. This is something that is truly amazing and worthy of the utmost recognition. So here today, I thank Sergeant Tommy Prince for his sacrifices. I thank him for setting the example of what a warrior is to be. But most importantly, I thank him for his inspiration. Thank you. And um, we're going to see a, momentarily we're going to see the video, right, of Sergeant Tommy Prince. And so I would like to um, just let you know that we will watch the video and then I will give you your instructions for the next um, sort of portion of the uh, day, which is to then look at the displays and, and um, there are questions on the table. So I will advise you on that once we see the video. Thomas George Prince was born on October 25, 1915, and was a member of the Broken Head Ojibwe Nation, located 80 kilometers north of Winnipeg. He was the great-great-grandson of Peguis, the legendary Salto chief who played a prominent role in the early history of the Red River settlement. Growing up, Prince developed exceptional skills as a marksman and tracker from countless hours spent hunting in the wilderness. He received his formal education at Elkhorn Industrial School and after leaving school was employed primarily as a tree feller. He also joined the Army Cadets while he was a teenager. When war broke out in 1939, Tommy was eager to enlist and even though he easily met the recruitment requirements for the Army, he was turned down several times before finally being accepted on June 3, 1940. Originally a member of the Royal Canadian Engineers, Prince volunteered for duty with the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion and received his jump training at RAF Ringway in Manchester, England. Prince returned to Canada in 1942 to rejoin his battalion and was promoted to sergeant and soon after volunteered for an elite American-Canadian Joint Commando Unit, the 1st Special Service Force, also known as the Devil's Brigade. Sergeant Tommy Prince and the Devil's Brigade saw action in Italy and France, and Tommy's heroics on the battlefield are the stuff of legend. For his actions, Sergeant Prince was awarded the Military Medal, and his citation read, Sergeant Prince's courage and utter disregard for personal safety were an inspiration to his fellows and a marked credit to his unit. Sergeant Tommy Prince returned to Britain and was summoned to Buckingham Palace on February 12, 1945, where King George VI presented him with his military medal. In all, Tommy Prince was decorated nine times during World War II, and he was one of only three Canadian soldiers to receive both the military medal and the U.S. Silver Star for gallantry in action. He was honorably discharged on June 15, 1945. Prince returned from the war and turned his attention to the advancement of First Nations interests and in 1946 was elected chairman of the Manitoba Indian Association and spent considerable time in Ottawa advocating for changes to the Indian Act. But he grew frustrated with the red tape in Ottawa and when hostilities broke out in Korea in 1950, Prince decided to re-enlist in the Canadian Army and fight with the United Nations forces. He was reinstated as a sergeant in the 2nd Battalion, Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Sergeant Prince was a fighting member of the 2nd PPC Ally when it became the first Canadian unit ever to be awarded the United States Presidential Unit Citation for Distinguished Service in the now celebrated Battle of Kap Yong in April 1951. During a second tour of duty in Korea, Prince fought with the 3rd PPC Ally and was wounded in the Battle of the Hook. For his contributions during the Korean War, he was awarded the Korean Medal, the Canadian Volunteer Service Medal, and United Nations Service Medal, and he was honorably discharged in October 1953. Tommy Prince ended his distinguished military career as one of Canada's most decorated First Nations veterans, earning a total of 12 medals. In peacetime, he was also a man of remarkable integrity, with a fierce pride in his people. He was quoted as saying, 
All my life I had wanted to do something to help my people recover their good name. Thomas George Prince died November 25, 1977, at the age of 62, and is buried in the Field of Honor at Winnipeg's Brookside Cemetery. Since his passing, a number of honors have been bestowed in his name, in an effort to keep his memory alive. The school in Scanterbury, Manitoba, on the Broken Head Ojibwe Nation, bears his name, as does the 553rd Sergeant Tommy Prince Memorial Medal Cadet Corps, who parade out of the freight house. A large mural which depicts elements of Tommy's distinguished military career overlooks the intersection of Sergeant Tommy Prince Street and Selkirk Avenue. And Sergeant Tommy Prince Veterans Park is located nearby at the end of Battery Street. There is also a bronze monument to Tommy Prince in a secluded spot near the pavilion in Kildonan Park, just a few steps from the monument that honors his ancestor, Chief Peguis. to have a song shortly, but first we're going to do an honoring ceremony. And this ceremony is at the request of the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg and the advisory committee to the project. And it is going to be to honor the veterans that are here with us today, but it is also to honor the advisory committee because the advisory committee has um, guided this project every step of the way. And what we have, which will be presented, is crane feathers, because the crane feathers represent perseverance and determination. So we have veteran Donald Mackey, and he is uh, Order Manitoba. We have veteran Richard Blackwolf, National President of the Canadian Aboriginal Veterans and Serving Members Association. We have veteran Bill Shedd, the Lieutenant Commander, he's retired. And then we have Korean War veteran Michael Boca. Private, veteran of the Battle of Capion. We have veteran Stu Weeks, past president of the 2PPCLI Association, served in Indochina. Veteran Sean Smith, Afghanistan. Veteran Sheldon Quinn, transportation warrant officer, 2PPCLI. Major J.T. Williams, Deputy Commanding Officer to PPCLI. Major Warrant Officer Shane Pollock, QMSI of 2 PPCLI. We have Tommy Prince Jr. on our advisory committee. As well, Damon Johnson, President of the Aboriginal uh, Council of Winnipeg. And those are our distinguished guests, our veterans. Thank you so much. Gitchi miigwech for all that you do and all that you've left for us. And we will now have the um, Eagle Warrior drum group, and they will be doing an honor song. So if you'd please stand as we honor these men and women.
And um, now we're going to have um, some entertainment. enjoyed the entertainment. I hope that all of you enjoyed the rest of the afternoon. We do have, uh, well, one more performance, and it's uh, a young man who will be playing fiddle and a young woman who's jigging. Let's give it up for Jason and Tracy. of the organizers, um, the Aboriginal Council of Winnipeg and their advisory committee for today's event. So I was 
deeply honored to be here today and um, we had a very interesting day and it was a privilege and honor and I would also like to let you know that there's a website you guys can go to it's called indigenouscourage.ca so the video will be on the website um, all of the all the materials that are here today are on the website and our elder Norman Mead who is now going to come up and do a closing prayer Great Spirit, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together in memory and in honor of those brave men and women that have stood their ground and have blazed the trail for us so that we could, be, we could have freedom, we could have joy and peace in our lives. And we just say thank you. We say miigwech to you, Great Spirit, this afternoon. And we say it in honor of our veterans this afternoon, miigwech. Miigwech, miigwech. Well, I'm very honored and proud to be here at this event today. I think it is important for our youth and our people in general just to know what our um, men and women have done for the world. And I come here today and see all this, and it makes me very proud to see that Tommy's getting the honor he deserved. And I feel very proud. And it's good to have an occasion like this when you have an awful lot of youth participating. It's good to have them here, one, to hear the stories, and secondly, as planned, to have a little bit of feedback from them. To me, that's the, that makes the whole event worthwhile. The Honoring Indigenous Heroes Tommy Prince Commemorative Project serves as a lasting resource for enhancing our shared knowledge of the impact of Indigenous soldiers in Canadian military history. Continue to share the story online. Visit indigenouscourage.ca for a unique and comprehensive look at the history and impact of Indigenous peoples in the Canadian Armed Forces, using the story of Tommy Prince as its focal point. This project has been made possible in part by the Government of Canada.